Now, the winner of this game could see the top seed in this region, the South Carolina Gamecocks, who are up over Mercer in the fourth quarter. One ACC team already through, although Georgia Tech tested in overtime to get past Stephen F. Austin. Jen Hildreth, Kelly Gramlich, former Clemson Tiger, on the call. And Kelly, when we look at these two teams, a lot of similarities between the two, but they are both led by an all-conference player of Oregon State. That's Aaliyah Goodman. Leah Goodman has been exceptional this season for the Beavers. She is the second best three-point shooter in the country in terms of percentage. She's scoring the ball. She's a great passer. She is a former sixth woman of the year in the Pac-12, but she has evolved into a superstar for Oregon State. For Florida State, that player leading the way, they're all ACC. First team selection by the coaches this season is junior Morgan Jones. Morgan Jones can score the ball, Jen. She is, what I have said, the best athlete on the floor for Florida State. I think she'll be the best athlete in this game. She is exceptional on the open floor. She's also a member of the All-ACC defensive team. And look at her numbers in that big win over Louisville, 26 and 10. That was a season-defining win for Florida State. Can they keep it going? They've shown they can compete with the best of the best when they knocked off Louisville in the regular season. Louisville Cardinals, a two seed in this NCAA tournament. Take a look at our starting lineups brought to you by Capital One. First for the Florida State Seminoles. Pretty friendly faces there. The usual suspects with Bianca Jackson, the transfer from South Carolina, Courtney Weber, Morgan Jones, Sammy Puisis, and Valencia Myers on the inside. And for Oregon State, who's around Aaliyah Goodman? She's got another great later leader there with her, and Taya Corsdale, the redshirt junior. Sasha Goforth, the freshman in the starting five, along with Ellie Mack and Taylor Jones. The same starting five in every game this season for the Beavers. So some consistency there in a season. Well, there has not been that much of it for either of these two teams. They've each played just 18 games on the season. That's amongst the fewest in the NCAA field. And Scott Ruick just talked about being positive throughout all of the struggles and adversity that his team faced throughout the season to get here to the NCAA tournament. And we tip it off. Florida State in their garnet uniforms. Oregon State in white. Seminoles with the ball. Florida State blending in with this court a little bit, Jen. I like it. I they mean, may, they, maybe they feel at home, perhaps, here I, in San Marcos. I think they might. Certainly looks similar to the Tucker Center floor down in Tallahassee, Florida. Nice some colors. Both of these teams seem to hit their stride coming into this NCAA tournament. Taylor Jones will be the force on the inside. I think she thought she had that one going down. Didn't quite make it through. That is going to be a fun matchup. Valencia Myers, Taylor Jones, Jones at 6'4", Myers at 6'3". Those two are each true fives and play a lot of that center position for both squads. Myers got her hand on the rebound to keep this possession alive for Florida State. Oh, and the bank is open early for the Seminoles from three. Okay, I'm convinced they feel at home. You only bank in threes <laughs> when you feel at home. And Courtney Weber said, I will take it. The foul on the floor there as Goforth was trying to make her way to the basket. What a tremendous job by Brooke Wyckoff this season as interim head coach. We're so used to seeing Sue Semrau 23 seasons as the head coach on the sidelines for Florida State. She took a leave of absence this year to care for her mother, Rosemary, who was battling cancer and who was doing very well. We want to make sure we point out. But so is this Florida State team getting back to the NCAA tournament in the absence of their head coach. And how about Aaliyah Goodman from the corner off to a hot start. She is a knockdown shooter. You <laughs> To shoot at like she's shooting the ball, Jen, it's absolutely insane. 49% from three. Every shot, almost every three-point shot is a good shot for Aaliyah Goodman. Yeah, when you're shooting it, 49%, second in the country from three. I think that light is bright green for her anytime she wants it. But she has very good shot selection. You only shoot 49% if you're taking good shots. She's not going to force it, but if she gets an open look, that is going to be bad news for FSU. Jones showing off that jumper. She pulls up, has her first points. 
We talked about Morgan Jones in the open, first team all ACC by the coaches. She has had some incredible games this year, 36 points against Clemson. She had the massive game against Louisville, but sometimes she's a little inconsistent, can be a little up and down. We know what she's capable of, but if she can score in double figures, then Florida State has a very good chance to pull out a win. She's coming off a game where she scored just five points in the ACC tournament quarterfinals. It was back on March 5th. That was a buzzer-beating loss to Syracuse for Florida State in that game. Syracuse Orange, as many of you probably just saw, also advancing in this NCAA tournament. They won their first round game against San Diego State, South Dakota State, excuse me, Jack Rabbits. And a little bit of turnover trouble for Oregon State, their first couple of offensive possessions after that three from Goodman. Sasha Goforth has been a very important piece for Oregon State this year. Just a freshman, but a McDonald's All-American out of Arkansas. Sammy Puisis on the other side for Florida State also was a McDonald's All-American. Five points in the game for Courtney Weber to lead the way for Florida State early. We talk about efficient shooters. How about Courtney Weber coming into this game shooting 45% from the field, 39% from three, and 82% from the free throw line. Some really good numbers for the junior out of New Orleans for Florida State. And Leah Goodman at the line, you could kind of sense, Kelly, that she felt her team needed something positive on the offensive end, and she gave it to them. Jen, Aaliyah Goodman is shooting free throws. I am not going to give out this stat. I'm just going to say that she has made a lot of free throws this year, and a lot of them consecutively. 33 in a row for those of you who like to count. It's not going to be my fault. <laughs> that's, that's a pure shooter talking to you right there, folks. <laughs> I can't do that to her. I just can't. <laughs> Morgan Jones from the elbow. What are you looking for in the pace of this game, Kelly, with the way these two teams want to play? FSU, I think they want to speed it up a little bit just because I think they have an athleticism advantage. But overall this season, they haven't played that fast. They've only scored over 70 points three times. But Oregon State, if you let them get out in transition, they're going to find some open threes. They would prefer to slow it down a little bit. And just because Oregon State is so efficient in the half court, if you're Florida State, I do believe you want to run a little more than you normally would. You can see that in that last possession. Bianca Jackson really pushing the tempo, tried to get the ball down the floor in a hurry. Goodman giving a gift there with the open look. His defender fell down, couldn't finish, but Jones can take care of business on the inside. Taylor Jones, 6'4", 6'10", wingspan. She kept that ball high. What's really impressive about this play, you're about to see the replay. Morgan Jones got a block on Taylor Jones somehow, but Taylor Jones got the ball right back and scored. And that's what you do if you're a post player. If you have a 6'10", wingspan, keep the ball high. Keep the ball above your head. And even though Morgan Jones got a piece of it, which is really impressive, Taylor Jones stayed with the play could not complete the three-point play. So we'll stay tied at seven. Open three available, but not successful. That trip down the floor. Florida State, though, to your point about pace, Jen, they cannot get roped into a three-point shootout because they don't want to be in a three-point shootout with Oregon State. FSU only shoots 32% from three. Oregon State, second-best three-point shooting team in the country. I don't think that's a recipe for success for the Knowles. You could see Oregon State really make an effort to get back. It did not matter for Bianca Jackson, the leading scorer on the season for the Seminoles, who's been on a tear, averaging nearly 15 points per game over her last five. It feels like re she has really settled in to her role. She's a transfer, so it, early in the season, it felt like to me that she was just trying to get everyone else involved, but now she's looking more for her own shot. Another triple goes down, go forth connecting. The answer on this end will not fall. And now Florida State has to get back. Go forth, lines up another. Jackson leading the way again. We'll take it right against Goodman who commits the foul. So Oregon State with an early one point lead but Florida State ball when we come back.
The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? And in part by ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Welcome back to the Women's NCAA Championship presented by Capital One. Jen Hildreth, former Clemson Tiger, Kelly Gramlich on the call for this one. Kelly, we knew that 8-9 matchup, you expected things to be tight. A lot of similarities between these two teams, and it is tight so far. It is, and these are two teams that have had different COVID issues during this season. I think they're both finally starting to play well and hitting their strides. Yeah, we saw that as they came down the stretch for the season, really things starting to click for both of them. But this is a little bit of what you were talking about. They both have had significant impact due to the COVID-19 pandemic. 15 scheduled changes for Florida State, 13 for Oregon State. Both of them had 11 games either canceled or postponed. They had several stretches where they went days without games. And they only played 18 games coming into this NCAA tournament. And NCAA did that rule where you get this year back and did the blanket waiver because if either of these one of these teams uh, season is going to end today and you're going to end just playing 19 games that's not a full season so i'm really glad the ncaa did that and yes this season counts in terms of crowning a national champion there's no asterisk there or anything like that but 19 games does not make a full season of college basketball generally Good defense being played by the Seminoles trying to take the lead and they do. Tiana England came in off the bench and now has some points to show for it. Florida State will get out in passing lanes over seven steals per game and that's what FSU has to do in this game. They have to find a way to make Oregon State uncomfortable, to force some turnovers, get some easy points in transition. Super sub, super freshman. Kalia Von Olhoffen on the floor for Oregon State. She looked inside, tried to get it to the bread and butter of Jones, who couldn't finish. Now it's Morgan Jones. It is tough to keep up with the Joneses in this game, but we shall do our best. <laughs> A plus for that reference, Jen. And see, nobody caught up with Taylor Jones. She ran the floor, got a wide open look because of it. Both teams need to pick up a little bit in transition defense. In the previous play, Morgan Jones, no one picked her up until she was in the paint. On that play, no one knew where Taylor Jones was. Every coach loves a post player that can run the floor, and that was a great job by Taylor Jones. Run to the cup and see where the ball is. And she snags the defensive rebound on this end of the floor, one of the top rebounders in the Pac-12 this season. Go forth. Had to bat it away. England out in front for Florida State. Hit just about every part of the rim. Didn't go in. We mentioned Talia von Olhoffen. She is one of these early enro enrollees of whom there have been 24 in this very odd season where you've seen some high school seniors opt to graduate early, join the program they were going to join a little earlier than expected but she has been by far the most productive of any of those 24 early enrollees in the country she has been incredible jen I, I don't think even if we explain this fully i don't think people understand how difficult it is to just show up she arrived in corvallis on january 22nd played in a game just two days later since she's shown up she's averaging 12 and a half points per game as you just saw and oregon state is eight and three since she arrived on campus she has been so important for them her dad kimo you just saw a defensive lineman with the steelers for many years defense really been helping florida state out in the early going Five turnovers by Oregon State in the game have led to some seminal points, and there's a couple more. Florida State loves the mid-range. They love coming off a ball screen, one dribble pull-up. They also rebound really well off of it, but Bianca Jackson and Morgan Jones, they feel most comfortable around where you see that Sun Belt logo here on the Texas State floor. Foul against the Seminoles there. 
All four NIT quarterfinals coming to ESPN Networks on Thursday, beginning with Mississippi State and Richmond at 6 Eastern on ESPN2 and the ESPN app. Visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. Valencia Myers picking up that foul for Florida State. Her first and then off the inbounds. Great execution as Ellie Mack finishes. Really good finish inside by Ellie Mack. Bianca Jackson was there. Mack had to rotate in the air, move the ball in the air, but that was well done. River Baldwin in the game now for Florida State. Bring some depth in the post off the bench for the Seminoles. Number one. Yana Mitrovic also in off the bench for Oregon State. 6'9", redshirt freshman there wearing number 12, grabs the rebound on cue. Mitrovic brings some serious size. Very rarely do you see 6'5", River Baldwin look short down on the block, but Mitrovic has that effect on almost everyone. Von Olhoffen, there is no oh, wow. fear in this freshman. She just got here, Jen. She has been a college basketball player for two months. <laughs> and she does that. Some people are just built different mentally, and Coach Scott Ruick could not stop talking about her on our pre our pregame Zoom and just talked about how special she was. He's never seen a kid. Of course, he's never had someone enroll early like this, but he has just been blown away by how she's been able to handle the college game so quickly. Let's take another look at this. She brushes off the screen, attacks baseline, cuts through two defenders, and finishes with the reverse layup. Like she's been playing college basketball for years. Two months, people. Two months. That's incredible. Coach Ruick told us he started to say she's one of the most, then he just stopped. And he said, <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. It's like in he terms didn't have of words for her, really. Right. To come in and do what she has done and to be ready for the speed the mental challenges of learning his system, the college game, all of it, and to just not only be pretty good, but to be really good. I mean, she's been a game changer, really, for this Oregon State team down the stretch. No doubt about it. And Bianca Jackson just crossed up. Oregon, an Oregon State defender here, look at that crossover. Looks right, goes left, Jasmine Simmons, that would have happened to anyone. That, that's not on Jasmine Simmons, but that is a nice crossover from Bianca Jackson. Jackson, the transfer from South Carolina, team who it's looking fairly likely with just a few seconds left in that game. The winner of this one will face in the next round, so that would be a little bit of irony there for Miss Jackson as she transferred from South Carolina. And the Gamecocks were actually the team that eliminated the Florida State Seminoles in the second round of the last NCAA tournament back in 2019. Very full circle. And this is her eighth NCAA tournament uh, game, Bianca Jackson's, by far the most experienced player on the floor with NCAA tournament games. Went to both the Elite Eight and the Sweet 16 with the Gamecocks. Von Olhoffen glances off the front of the rim. And what did we tell you? The 8-9 matchup, you expect it to be tight. And so far, it is. Florida State, Oregon State tied at 16 after one. From San Marcos, Texas, in the Hemisphere region, we are all tied up after one. Florida State and Oregon State both even at 16 apiece. The winner of this game now knows they will face the top seed in the region, the South Carolina Gamecocks, who handled the Mercer Bears in their first round game, just finishing up moments ago. So South Carolina, Georgia Tech, the two teams we already know, into the second round. You can keep an eye on all of the NCAA Women's Championship right here on ESPN and the ESPN app. So Sweet 16 coming right up, followed by the Elite Eight, your Final Four on Friday, April 2nd, all culminating in the championship. On Sunday, April 4th, 6 p.m. Eastern on ESPN, our coverage beginning at 5. Both of these teams looking to keep on dancing in San Antonio. And then Jones just had it taken right out of her hands by Von Olhoffen. Yeah, 
Taylor Jones. River Baldwin doing the defending for Florida State. Goodman. And Sammy Puis is left her. That's a bad idea when the person with the ball is Leah Goodman. Goodman is so good at Huntington. They're coming off screens and knocking down that mid-range right there at the, the Sun Belt logo. Coach Brooke Wyckoff told us one of the main keys for FSU is guarding ball screens. They have to know where Goodman is. They have to be able to get over the screen and know where shooters are. But speaking of shooters, Sammy Puisis knocks down a long-range three for the Knolls. She is someone who could really benefit Florida State if she gets going again. Seminoles just oh, fall into the ground. That creates an opening lane for Goodman, who takes advantage. But Puisis, just 4 of 24 from 3 over her last four games. This is a player who was the top three-point shooter by percentage earlier in the season. She's a great shooter. She's been in a little bit of a slump. Every shooter knows about that. But sometimes it just takes one to fall, especially your first shot of the day, and then you start feeling it. And Oregon well, State's feeling it as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say, Taya Corsdale has her first points. All five starters have now scored for Oregon State. And this is a team that knows all about knocking down the threes. They are second in the nation, hitting at a clip about 41%. Maybe a little early heat check there for Puises. That was a deep attempt from three. Look, I would have done the same thing. Okay, I know Puises is feeling good. She gets an open look. That was a deep shot. Doesn't get it to go. And Florida State, ball screen defense. That's been the issue, and I promise you, that is what Coach Wyckoff is talking to her Seminoles about right now. Oregon State's Aaliyah Goodman is a nightmare to guard out of a ball screen. Why? Because you have to go over the screen. She's the second best three-point shooter in the country. So you have to get over that screen. And once you try to, she's so quick, she gets past the post but has to hedge for a split second and gets right to the rim. So the reason she is so hard to guard is because of how she shoots the three. You have to respect it. You can't go under that screen. And if you don't, she's going to get right past your post player hedging. If you do go under, she's going to hit you with a three. So that's exactly why Coach Wyckoff was so worried about Aaliyah Goodman. And Goodman has been exceptional so far in this game. 7-0 run for the Beavers. Take their largest lead of the game so far. Seminoles going in to Valencia Myers. Back out for Weber, who knocks down the three. Big shot for Courtney Weber. Florida State needed that to get some momentum back, to slow down Oregon State, make them work in the half court instead of getting out and running in transition. That was a big time shot from Courtney Weber. Defense for Florida State did cause some problems on this end of the floor for Oregon State early. Eight on the shot clock and a wide open look for Savannah Samuel. The freshman had nobody around her. When you double, someone's open. You just hope that you have enough help side and, and your players are rotating well enough. But FSU just got a little lost in Oregon State. If you get lost, Oregon State's going to make you pay. Beavers finished fifth in the Pac-12. They started one of five. They finished six of one in the regular season and then won a couple of games in the Pac-12 tournament before eventually losing the semifinals to Stanford. And Jones just working it on the inside. And Jen, in that situation on that ball screen, Florida State tried to bring more help. Goodman was doubled for a split second when the post hedged. She swung it back to the wing. The wing got it inside to Taylor Jones. Super quick passing. FSU's rotations weren't there, mainly because of the decision making. Goodman is making such great decisions out of those ball screens. She has the ball in her hands now. Saw the open player, just as you called it, Kelly, because there was Taylor Jones, open, ready, and waiting. Goodman is so impressive. She attracts so much attention from the defense, and most of the time she's quick enough to get to the basket, but if you slow her down, if you bring two to stop her, she is going to find her open teammate every time. I mean, Florida State trying to stop the bleeding right now. Jones was on the floor, winds up tripping up Goodman on her way to the basket. She's just putting on a clinic, Jen. She is finding her teammates if they bring two, she is going to find the open white jersey. 
It is a pleasure to watch Aaliyah Goodman wheel and deal in that ball screen offense. Yeah, it's, it's been fun to watch so far, and you can see why Scott Ruick, when he talks about her, has such high praise for his senior. Just said she is just exceptional at so many things. And as a veteran, she sets the tone through this difficult season. He said she was always positive, which we now know talking to him, a lot of that comes from the head coach as well, but she's certainly one of the players who's continuing to keep this team together throughout this season. I love her story too. Coach Ruick said that her parents went to George Fox, which was the D3 school where Coach Ruick coached before he came to Corvallis. And so he has known Aaliyah since she was in the third grade. And she has always dreamed of becoming a Beaver and playing for Oregon State. It's really an incredible story. And she is not just playing for Oregon State, she is starring for this team. And I would also like to point out that we did not talk about any sort of free throw consecutively <laughs> made when and she was won't. at the line. Right, we're not this. doing that. But Oregon State continues to pour it on. A 16 to three run as Florida State looking rattled. The biggest issue for me, for Florida State right now, Jen, is they're not making shots and they're not taking very good shots. Their shot selection hasn't been great. And so when you're missing shots, Oregon State is grabbing those rebounds and they're able to run. When you make shots, you force Oregon State to walk the ball off the, up the floor and you make them a little more uncomfortable. When you miss shots, they get to bring the ball up the floor and this time Goodman's pulling it out, but Oregon State has been very good in transition. Well, not a lot of offensive rebound opportunities for Florida State either in this game. It's been one and done the last few trips down the floor. Weber was hot early. Florida State thought they might have gotten that ball back, but it will stay with Oregon State. Both of these programs, Kelly, have had a lot of success in the first round of the NCAA tournament. In fact, Brooke Wyckoff was the one who pointed out to us when we talked to her. She said, you know, Sue Semrau and I talk a lot this season, but, but that Coach Sue has really allowed this to be Brooke's team this year. And she has allowed her to fully hold the reins, a former player at Florida State who played for Sue Semrau. But Brooke told us yesterday, well, I know that Florida State is 15-0 in the first round of the NCAA tournament under Sue Semrau, so no pressure. And she brought it up, we didn't. So she was very aware of that stat. And Steve Stone, the excellent FSU sports information director, said he left it out of the notes just to spare Brooke Wyckoff a little bit, but Brooke was very aware of that stat. And she also pointed out that Coach Semrau did not bring that number up to her. She just knew about it herself, so. That's what Florida State has to try to live up to, and they've, they've done that all season long, live up to those great expectations. Offensive foul called that time as Valencia Myers draws the charge. And, you know, you think about the risk, really, that Coach Simrau took this year when she opted to, after 23 seasons, take a leave of absence and care for her mother. I mean, there are some tough decisions made all throughout the country for a lot of people this year, and, and Brooke Wyckoff talked about that. She said, you know, this is... Think about the risk that she took, and yet look what her team did in her absence. They still finished fourth in the ACC after being picked eighth by the coaches in the preseason, after losing three 1,000-point scorers last year and their longtime head coach being on the sideline this season. And what they have done, just incredible. You speak of the risk. I think it also shows the trust that Susan Rao had in Brooke Wyckoff to leave her in that position and Brooke Wyckoff was able to get Florida State back to the NCAA tournament. And of course, like you said, finished fourth in the ACC. And Wyckoff didn't just play at FSU, Jen. She has her jersey retired yeah. at Florida State. She's kind of a big deal down there in Tallahassee. <laughs> she is, but what she needs right now, Kelly, some offense. Florida State has just gone cold. A drought of nearly five minutes now for the Seminoles as this lead just continues to increase for Oregon State. Tiana England finally adding a few points on that Florida State side. Much needed for Florida State. Tiana England did not play for this team until February 7th. Very good transfer from St. John's, an excellent passer. When she's in the game, she's able to play more of the one and Bianca Jackson can play off the ball, play the two and look to score more. 
Weber had it slammed away. Goforth reached that long arm out and said, uh-uh. Goodness. Goodness. Goforth. Oh, my gosh. She swatted that thing. And then looked in. No emotion. No emotion. Most players would be yelling and screaming. Goforth says, all in a day's work. That's just business right there. <laughs> I like that from a freshman. Don't get too high. Don't get too low. She expected to get that block. And she came from the heart of Arkansas Razorback country from Fayetteville, Arkansas. And Scott Ruick saying when we went to look at some players, we weren't even looking at her, but he saw a little bit of that. And he said, I saw the athleticism. I really like big guards. I got to have her. And she's a McDonald's All-American. She was a highly rated Ooh. recruit. Arkansas is a very good program, but Coach Ruick said that he and Sasha Goforth just connected and she wanted to come out to Oregon State. Minute and 26 seconds remaining in our first half. Coming up at the half, AT&T 5G in the studio. Kelsey Riggs, Monica McNutt, Andrea Carter will have you covered. Give you the latest on Georgia Tech, avoiding that scare in overtime and catch you up on some of the big stars so far, including Caitlin Clark. Just want to make sure Kelsey Riggs saves me a peanut butter protein ball from the ESPN cafeteria in the studio. Just going to put that out there, Kelsey Riggs. Just uh, send that airmail. Don't have too much fun without me. Well, Kelly, I know you and Monica and Kelsey got to watch a lot of ACC basketball this season. You guys did a phenomenal job in the studio all year long and we'll be talking about a couple of ACC teams in this hemisphere region as we just told you Georgia Tech we already know the Yellow Jackets are through although not without a fight I mean that game didn't even reach 50 points until they got to overtime but if any team is gritty and tough it's Georgia Tech they showed that in their win and now Florida State certainly faced with a stiff challenge here with what Oregon State has done in this first half you know, Jen, you and I called the Michigan-Florida Gulf Coast game earlier in the day, and I felt like Michigan was underseated because of their COVID issues, because they've had players out, they miss a lot of games. I'm feeling that way about Oregon State as well. I just have to imagine what this Oregon State team would have looked like if they had played more than 18 games, and now the fact that they have Talia Von Olhoffen in the lineup, they didn't have her for the first portion of the season. So I feel like Oregon State is most likely better than an eight seed, and we're seeing that manifest so far in this tournament. Yeah, the Beavers looking good through the first half so far of this one against Florida State. They're shooting 55% overall, 33% from three. Von Olhoffen, great patience and poise to pick out Jones. And there's Von Olhoffen running that ball screen offense that we've seen Goodman run so well. That was a great pass. And Taylor Jones does a great job of setting the screen, running right to the basket, making her available, making herself available for her guard. So when that post player hedges, Jones is using her quickness and getting in position for her guard to find her. Final few seconds on the clock. Savannah Wilkinson will take the shot for Florida State, and the Seminoles' cold streak continues. Aliyah Goodman carrying the load for the Oregon State Beavers, who are looking good in the first half. 14 points for Goodman to lead the way for the Beavers to get you caught up on everything NCAA Women's Tournament. Let's go to Kelsey in the studio. We welcome you back to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. From San Marcos in the Hemisphere region, the 8-9 matchup sees the Oregon State Beavers up 14 over the Florida State Seminoles at the half. The winner of this one will take on top-seeded South Carolina in the next round. Jen Hildreth, former Clemson Tiger, Kelly Gramlich on the call. Kelly. I know you have been really impressed by what you've seen so far from Oregon State. I have. I think their guards have done such a great job of running their ball screen offense, and Florida State just doesn't have a lot of answers for it right now. 
Brooke Wyckoff said that was a point of emphasis for them, and so I'm sure she was talking about that at halftime. But take a look at what these guards do. They read that Florida State post player every time. If the FSU post player sags off, then they go right to the basket, as you see right there with Goodman. If the FSU post player helps, they're going to make a pass, and you'll see this here with Talia Von Olhoff and River Baldwin is helping. She finds Taylor Jones, and what makes all this work is Von Olhoffen and Goodman are such good three-point shooters that the defense cannot even think about going under the screen. If you go under, you're really protecting against the drive, but because they have to go over the top of the screen, that's how they're able to turn the corner because you have to respect those shooters. So paint points heavily in favor of Oregon State. That's part of the reason they're shooting 57%. They are a very good three-point shooting team, one of the best in the country by percentage. But as you just showed, Kelly, that's the option that has been there for this team. They have taken it. They have taken advantage of it. 13 of their 17 made field goals coming in the paint in the first half. Florida State has to find a way to counter it. We'll see if they try to throw some different things at them. Maybe they'll ice the ball screen, trapping the ball screen, forcing them to make some tough decisions. But I think first and foremost, those post players, when they do help over, they have to get big, Jen. They have to make themselves as big as possible to prevent those passes the guards are making to Taylor Jones. Morgan Jones, the player we highlighted, the All-ACC first team selection by the coaches in the regular season for Florida State. Just two points in the first half. She was one of six. Seminoles need to get her going in the second half. Myers turns around, got a step on Jones and gets Taylor Jones to commit the foul. That was very smart by Valencia Myers. Earlier in the game, she had her shot blocked by Taylor Jones, but this time she slowed down her attack and made sure, she stops a little bit there, made sure she drew contact to earn her trip to the free throw line. That was a very smart play by Myers. Valencia Myers is the best field goal percentage on the team on the season for Florida State. Just under 54%. She hits both of her free throws. She now has four, trying to help Florida State climb back into it. I like this three-quarter court pressure from FSU, trying to force some turnovers. Oregon State does have seven turnovers in this game. It's, they're, they're not perfect, Jen. If you can find a way to trap them, force some turnovers, then FSU can definitely get back in this game. Yeah, that was really more the story early. We were tied after the first quarter in this one and Morgan Jones just what came flying in there to get that block. Wow. Bianca Jones continues to fly. Bianca Jackson, excuse me, but misses the layup in transition. Oregon State does a great job of getting back in transition. That, that's how they've prevented FSU from feasting in transition. They don't send that many to the O-glass. They just go back because they know the Seminoles can be very lethal when they get out in the open floor. Under 10 on the shot clock now for the Beavers. Goodman going to work, kept it high for Jones. Morgan and Jones Florida again, State. Jen. Trying to make her impact on this game. And Brooke Wyckoff told us that she knows with Morgan Jones, she can impact the game every time down the floor, especially on the defensive end. She was a member of the all-defense team in the ACC. Three blocks already for Morgan Jones. Two of those have come on Taylor Jones, who is 6'4". So Morgan Jones is getting up on defense. Go forth. What a drive to the basket for the freshman from Fayetteville, Arkansas. And she's fouled on the way in. I love Go Forth's game. She is a great attacker. Attacks the basket. Very tough. Knows when to get that ball up. And look, Coach Wyckoff, not sure what she can do because Goforth got that ball up early. She tried to lob it up off on the glass to avoid some of the bigger defenders for FSU. Just a smart play from the freshman. Yeah, and now Valencia Myers just picked up her third personal foul, and she's an important player to keep on the floor for Florida State. Remember talking to Brooke Wyckoff before their ACC quarterfinal against Syracuse, and she actually made a point to say, we've got to keep Myers on the floor. Valencia Myers fouled out of that game. Syracuse had a comeback to win it at the buzzer in the end. That's a good look for Sammy Pelesis. Just short, but FSU will take that. I like that down screen action and got an open look for their shooter. 
Corazale knocks it down for Oregon State. The Beavers proving why they are one of the best in the nation from downtown. And that seems to be the difference so far in this game, Jen. It feels like FSU, they're barely missing threes when they really need them, and Oregon State is making threes in timely situations. Beavers have opened up their largest lead of the game. Tiana England quickly in off the bench again for Florida State as she was in the first half. Another ball handler out there as Jackson hits. What a great decision by River Baldwin. She came in and snuck in a little screen. Did not get called for a moving screen. She did not move her feet, but she helped Bianca Jackson get an open look. Goodman a little too strong, and while everybody was waiting to see where the rebound would bounce, Ellie Mack came in and said, I'm going to take it. The NCAA Men's Basketball Championship continuing tonight with second round games. You can see those on CBS, TBS, TNT, and True TV, or stream them on the March Madness Live app from anywhere. For more information on game times and networks, go to NCAA.com. Oregon State men playing later tonight against Oklahoma State. The Beavers with both of their men's and women's teams in action in the NCAA tournament. And the Seminole men will play tomorrow, so both of these schools are dancing on, on both sides of the bracket. That's always fun. Get a little watch party, socially distance if you can, around your own games. Forsdale picking up the foul for Oregon State. And Von Olhoffen into the game, such a spark. That doesn't even seem like a big enough word off the bench for what she brings. Averages 12 and a half points per game, shoots at nearly 47% from three. A spark, a, a lightning bolt off the bench. I feel like yeah. we have to say <laughs> something more than a spark, but there's no doubt that's what she is, Jen. I like lightning bolt. I can work with that. <laughs> Lightning bolt, Von Olhoffen. <laughs> nice ring there to you it. Go. Rolls right off the top. Well, she, she tried to work that ball screen action that time. Mitrovic just couldn't hang on to it. Florida State, though, cannot make the Beavers pay. They got down the floor in transition, Kelly, and just could not finish. Those are the kind of shots right now that you have to convert if you're Florida State. You're trying to claw back in this game. Great defensive effort on the other end. You get a layup in transition and not able to connect. And there's a four-point swing. Oregon State comes back and knocks down a two. And so that's a four-point swing in this game. It's been a rough go here for Florida State as Oregon State picking up right where they left off. Still shooting the ball over 54% from the floor. Florida State under 30% for the game. Turnover gave this ball back to Oregon State, and they make no mistake. Go for it, Sasha. Add on a couple more. <laughs> There's maybe some contact that wasn't called on that previous possession, but Oregon State, if you give them extra chances, they are going to convert. They're that efficient of a team offensively. This game was tied at 16 after the first 10 minutes now. Oregon State opening up a 20-point lead. I mean, this is a big hole for this Florida State team to try to claw their way out of. Especially a team that doesn't shoot the three well. When you have a big hole like that, some teams are built better than others to come back from deficits. And FSU is not a team that is just most likely going to start raining threes. Ronald Hoffman looking for options. Florida State perhaps a better job that time. They didn't give her any and wind up taking it away. I really like how FSU defended that. River Baldwin came up on Van Olhoffen and made her make a decision, got big, used her size, and Van Olhoffen did not know what to do with the ball. So that was much better ball screen defense by the Knolls. So a good play on defense, not so good on offense as the Seminoles turn it over, give it back to the Beavers who are up 20.
State is a perfect 6-0 in the NCAA first round under head coach Scott Ruick, and that includes a run to the Final Four in 2016 where they knocked off one of the heavyweights, Baylor, to get there. Sydney Weiss had 18 points in the game, knocked down some free throws in the final few seconds, and that was the first Final Four best ever finish for this Oregon State program, trying to take their first step in this 2021 edition of the NCAA tournament. That was when Oregon State, to me, really arrived on the national level. And they're one of eight teams in the whole country to make the last four Sweet 16s. But that Final Four is just different. I feel like every program, if you want to establish yourself as a true power in the modern era, you've got to make a Final Four. And I know this is beyond our game, Jen, but that's what I'm looking at NC State to do as well. You've won a lot of regular season games. There's no doubt you're one of the best programs right now. But can you make that coveted Final Four? And Oregon State did just that back in 2016. NC State, a one seed for the first time over the Mercado region. They won and are on to their round two matchup. Another three-pointer goes down, this time from Goodman. I mean, you talk about, Kelly, teams who can beat you in a variety of ways. And you come into this game, and the number that stands out for Oregon State is their three-point shooting percentage. I mean, they shoot it so well, better than almost anybody in the country, at just about 41%. So you think, boy, we need to watch for the threes in this one. And then they come in, and they just kill you in the paint. 30 to 10 points in the paint advantage in this game for the Beavers. They play very much inside out, and when you hear that phrase, you think, oh, they pound it into their post player all day. Not necessarily. They play inside out in a way where their guards want to get a foot in the paint, and then they look for shooters. So to me, Jen, that's why they shoot the ball so well. I mean, they have great shooters, of course, but they get open looks because they're constantly attacking the paint, drawing the defense, and dishing out to find open shooters. They've only taken 12 threes. They take really good shots. And that's why they're able to shoot such a high percentage. And they have On a lead cue. They have a lead Goodman. Back to back <laughs> triples for the senior. That was a men's three, by the way. She was way off the line. She is impressive. 20 points in the game for Goodman to lead all scores. Three-pointer. Boy, Florida State could use a few more of those that Bianca Jackson delivers. Bianca Jackson is shooting up near 40% from three. She has really increased her three-point percentage throughout the season. And I think part of that is she's playing more her natural position. They want her to play off the ball. They want her to play the two. And Florida State has not really been able to be its full self this season because Tiana England was hurt for the majority of the early part of the year. But they much prefer to have England bringing the ball up and Bianca Jackson playing the two and looking to score. See England getting some more minutes down the stretch as she has gotten more acclimated to this Florida State team. Here she is with the ball. Transfer from St. John's. Gets a couple more points. She's got nine. That's a great duo right there. England and Bianca Jackson, Bianca Jackson playing in their true positions. It's just so unfortunate for the Knowles. They, they just didn't have their full team. Like so many teams that we've talked about this year didn't have their full squad together until the beginning of February. Tough drive by Morgan Jones. She's gone 25 plus minutes without a bucket. Seminoles need to get her going. FSU's showing some fight, Jen. They're not going anywhere. This is the NCAA tournament. They're gonna fight and try to claw themselves back into this game. And I love the energy and effort we're seeing from the Seminoles. For so much of this season, so many teams probably felt like they could not even begin to think of this NCAA tournament. They just had to think of whatever game was in front of them and hope they get to play it because nothing was certain in this season of uncertainty. So Florida State trying to make a game of it, keep this season alive, but they've got some work to do. Final few seconds of quarter number three. Weber will take the shot and hit it for Florida State. 
Jackson, excuse me, she's been the one with the hot hand and she knocks down another trying to keep the Seminoles in it. One quarter left to play from San Marcos, Texas. Oregon State looking good, shooting over 56% for the game. And take a look at our Capital One rewarding performance, leading the way, their leader, Aaliyah Goodman. She has been terrific, Jen. If you give her an open look, if you give her some daylight, she's gonna knock down the three, shoots 49% on the season. And then in the pick and roll, because you have to go over the screen against her, she's gonna get to the hoop. If you go under, she's gonna hit the three. If you don't come out, she's gonna hit another three. She's put on a clinic today. Yeah, give yourself a high five, Aaliyah Goodman. <laughs> give yourself a high five because she has been tremendous and 20 points in just 30 minutes of ball. Taylor Jones has been a great compliment as she has been all season for Oregon State. They make quite the duo, that's for sure, in those ball screen that ball screen offense and I love what coach Ruick was telling us about Taylor Jones that he's not sure any post player in the country worked harder than her in the offseason she's from Texas she's from the Dallas area so she was running stadiums and doing all that in 100 degree weather down there in Texas but coach Ruick was very impressed with her work ethic and he says look I recruit players that are going to have a good work ethic I'm not a babysitter I'm a coach of adults and I love how he said that so he does a lot of his work early in recruiting, and he wants players that are driven, that love basketball, that know what it means to work hard, and he does a great job of finding those players that fit his program. A couple of free throws from Taylor Jones, and meanwhile, Valencia Myers came back, picked up her fourth foul for Florida State. Coming up later on ESPN2, the NCAA Women's Championship first round continues. One more 8-9 matchup tonight, Washington State and South Florida. All games also available on the ESPN app. England from the Sunbelt logo here at the University Event Center, home of Texas State. I like Tiana England. I think if she stays another year, which I'm assuming she will be able to. She's a fifth-year senior, but every player gets this year back. If she wants to stay another year, you pair her up with Bianca Jackson, Courtney Weber. Those three guards are going to be formidable in the ACC. Yeah, this has been such a year of transition for Florida State in terms of players departing three 1,000-point scorers. Nikki Ikamu, Naja Wolfo, Kai Gillespie, all gone from last year's team. So you have to shift some players around. And I agree with you that I think the more England grows into this team, I mean, she was projected to be the starting point guard for this Florida State team. She was on the newcomer watch list for Florida State. And Oregon State, meanwhile, not taking their foot off the gas pedal. I'm quite impressed with Oregon State. They are fun to watch. And you have to find a way for to get them out of their ball screen action. Whatever you have to do, whether it's not allowing the guard to actually get to the screen and forcing her to not use the screen or trapping the ball screen or something because they are making this look way too easy. She comes off this screen. Well, oh, this isn't even a ball screen. This is her just going to work. I assumed it was a ball screen because it's Aaliyah Goodman, but she doesn't even need one that time to go score and go to work. The, the ball is in Goodman's hands almost every time at the running the offense and running the show, and she has executed to perfection tonight. That was Savannah Samuel, freshman out of Woodstock, Georgia, and Oregon State. That's one way to shoot a really good field goal percentage. Well, you get a lot of layups. Shoot layups. <laughs> the Beavers have done that tonight. Threes and layups and the occasional occasional two dribble pull up mid range. That has been the, the recipe for success tonight for Oregon State. Look at those points in the paint numbers, Oregon State. And a lot of those are layups. You know, when you think points in the paint, oh, they must be pounding it inside to Jones. 
Jones has scored the ball well, but a lot of that is off ball screen action. And so those points in the paint, most of those are a credit to the guards. Courtney Weber, a couple more points for Florida State. She's now in double figures. Jones left open. Jackson, who's come on so strong at the end of this season for Florida State, feeds it inside to Valencia Myers, who's out there playing with four fouls. She draws the foul this time from Jones, her second. And that is, a, that is a look of frustration, Kelly. I know that Florida State, it's hard sometimes not to look up there at the scoreboard, but got to find a way to keep fighting. And the Seminoles have shown some fight in spurts. They just have consistently not been able to keep up with this Oregon State team. Myers spins. Nice finish with the left hand for Valencia Myers. Very impressive move inside with Myers. She has great touch around the basket. She just hasn't really been able to get into a rhythm tonight, Jen, as you've mentioned with her foul trouble. So she hasn't been able to be on the floor enough to truly establish herself in this game. Goodman kept the ball in her hands. If that is Myers, her night is going to be over. And it is indeed. So Valencia Myers fouls out and will have to head to the bench for the remainder of this one. And this was a great move, just the possession earlier from Myers. Two dribble, spin, finish with the left, use your body to shield the ball. That was impressive. And look, she used all of her fouls. I know you say five fouls, she's on the bench, but she did all she could inside in that pick and roll action to try to slow down Oregon State. That was a tough task, I mean, it has been an entire team effort for Florida State that the Seminoles have struggled to contain the offense of Oregon State all night long. And we've talked so much about Goodman. What I think is the most impressive stat of her line tonight, 24 points, 8 of 12 from the field, 5 rebounds, 5 assists, 0 turnovers. With how much she has the ball in her hand, the fact that she has not turned the ball over is pretty incredible. Jackson will try from three. River Baldwin into the game. Can't grab the rebound. No one expected this Florida State team to do what they did this season. Managed to get themselves a fourth place finish in the regular season in the ACC. They earned the double by in the ACC tournament. And no one also expected Tilia von Olhoffen to come in and tear things up like she has done for Oregon State. I believe this line was from our producer, Eric, so I want to give him credit. She should be going to the prom, even though it's COVID, so no one's really going to the prom. But she should be going to the prom. Instead, she's playing college basketball and has seven points tonight. And running the point guard as Goodman, I think her day is done, running the point spot for Oregon State. It's just so impressive to see these early enrollees and we've seen it with a couple of other teams throughout the year when they come in and they just, they seem undaunted, which is incredible to think they're playing high school basketball, what, a couple of weeks ago for some of them are hoping to get with their team. Most of them are probably waiting for their season to begin. And then boom, here you go. NCAA basketball, now NCAA tournament. <laughs> That's what I found so fascinating about our chat with Coach Ruick is when the Olhoff, Von Olhoffens first suggested this, he was not a fan of it because he thought right. it would just be too much for a young high school senior to come in and play college basketball, especially in a COVID year where when you first arrive on campus, you have to quarantine and you have all these different pauses and whatnot. But the Von Olhoffens really wanted her to do it and Talia was down. She thought she could handle it. And that's part of why Coach Ruick has been so blown away by her because there aren't that many high school students that could handle playing college basketball, but also playing during a pandemic. Oregon State up 20 late against the Seminoles. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One.
What's in your wallet? One of the game changers for this Oregon State team this season, Talia Von Olhoffen. Remember the name. Her dad might have made the name before her playing football, but she's making one for herself. Kimo Von Olhoffen, 14 years in the NFL. That's dad. Smile on his face then. I imagine he's smiling a little bit tonight too with what his daughter and her team have been doing. Both he and Talia's mom who played basketball in college, by the way, in Hawaii able to come watch their daughter in this NCAA tournament first round. Really glad, Jen, that a lot of the families were able to be at these games and support their kids, even if they can't see them after the game and all that stuff because of COVID pro protocol. At least it's always a good feeling. I know I remember that feeling when you see your mom and dad in the stands, makes you play a little harder. Really happy for all these student athletes that that was able to happen. Sure, because many of them did not get that opportunity frequently, if at all, this season. So mom and dad loving what they're seeing behind those masks of their daughter Talia and the Oregon State Beavers tonight. Good to be playing some basketball in the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. Great to see some fans enjoying themselves in one way or another in the stands. More coming up later, 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific on ESPN. You get a chance to see the first round continue. The last 16-1 matchup, Utah Valley taking on the Stanford Cardinal, the number one seed in the Alamo region. Finishing things up here from San Marcos. The Oregon State Beavers have come in and made a big statement. They have shot the ball well all night they're still over 50 percent from the floor and they have made life difficult for the florida state seminoles out of the acc that's a great way to put it jen i think this is a statement a statement win for oregon state and look this has been a tough year to seed teams i think the committee did a great job overall but we just don't know what some of these teams are going to look like in march especially the ones that have been playing better lately like in Oregon State, when they finally have all their pieces together. If this is an eight seed, then wow, we have some very talented teams in this tournament. And it looks like they're going to have a chance to go up against a, a one seed and show, show their stuff in the next round, Jen, perhaps. I am looking forward to seeing what this team can do against South Carolina. I mean, the Gamecocks, the one seed in the Hemisphere region. That will be the round two matchup. It seems too early after seeing the way that this Oregon State team played tonight, but that is going to be a real treat in the second round. Just so much to like about this Oregon State team. The way they can shoot it from the outside, their composure getting it inside. And their defense, too, Kelly. I mean, I think that could be overlooked a little bit. But when we talk about making life difficult on the defensive end, they just have not given Florida State a lot of good looks. Coach Ruick describes their defense as position defense. They're not going to cause a lot of turnovers. Their steal numbers aren't going to wow you. But they generally hold other teams to very low field goal shooting percentages because they're always in the right spot defensively. Tune in to ESPN and the ESPN app Thursday at 7 when NC State takes on Colorado State in the first game of an NIT quarterfinals doubleheader. You can visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. And I think, Kelly, we just need to give a little credit here that down 20, under two minutes to play, and River Baldwin still standing out there trying to take a charge for her Florida State team. It didn't go her way, she got called for the block, but I think you gotta, you gotta credit those little moments of fight and grit for a team that you know has gotta be pretty disappointed right now in Florida State. Without a doubt, Jen, and this is a Florida State program, just like Oregon State, both of these programs over the last decade have established themselves as elite programs in this sport, and they're consistently in the Sweet 16, more years than not, they're always making the NCAA tournament, and so you see that culture at Florida State. I think that's what you saw with River Baldwin trying to take a charge. This was a young team 
a team that was just learning to play together and bringing a bunch of pieces in without head coach Sue Simrall. Brooke Wyckoff did an excellent job, but I still think the future is very bright for the Seminoles. And I know that that round one record of Sue Simrall is probably hanging a little bit heavy on Brooke Wyckoff's shoulders right now, but to your point, the job she did this season, just incredible. This score line stands and Oregon State hangs on as we expect they will with just a little bit over a minute remaining. Florida State would suffer their first first round loss in the NCAA tournament since 1990. But give that woman so much credit for what she did for this program this season. And no one will be quicker to tell you that than Sue Simrau. I know she's so pleased with her former player and her longtime assistant. Her caretaking of this program. Right. seconds of the shot clock and Ellie Mack the Patriot League player of the year when she was at Bucknell in her first year with Oregon State she's certainly a big part of what this Beaver team does as well perhaps the best part of this game for Oregon State is Leah Goodman over there resting on the bench for a good part of this fourth quarter try to get as much rest as possible heading in to that matchup with South Carolina She's got plenty of people to give her high fives now as both she and Taylor Jones getting a little rest there on the bench. But for Oregon State in a season rife with struggle, the Beavers are gonna keep on dancing, moving on to round two. Leah Goodman, what an evening for her in this first game of the NCAA tournament for the Beavers. 24 points, so efficient from the floor. Did miss that one free throw, but Jen, again, not on us. We're gonna stick with that. I don't think she'll mind. She got the result <laughs> she was looking for, despite that one missed free throw, as Oregon State now has a date with the top seed in this region, the South Carolina Gamecocks. Florida State could not join Georgia Tech as another ACC team to move on to round two out of this hemisphere region. Advantage Pac-12 in this matchup. As Oregon State, plenty of reasons to smile after that performance. Elliot Goodman after a brief rest. Now is going to be called into action again. This time just to chat with us for a few moments. Soak it all in. I mean, get your selfie stick, tripod, whatever that thing is. Check out Ellie Max Instagram afterwards. Should be good. There you go. Get that IG plug in there. Jen's <laughs> giving her the IG plug. We love it. <laughs> well, a player who needs no extra plug after that performance, Aliyah Goodman, congratulations. Can you just talk about really what your team did and what makes you the most proud of this performance tonight? Yeah, um, I'm just so proud of this team, especially after the first quarter. I feel like we kind of had a little bit of a feel out quarter. Um, and then we just came out in the second quarter and we really locked down. Uh, the defense, especially, I think through quarters two, three, and four, were just special. Um, that's really something we've been harping on. Um, but no, I mean, we were talking about it. We have four players who've played in the NCAA tournament um, between me, Taya, Jasmine, and Ellie Mack. And so. Just having new new people in this is an awesome experience. It's really special. Um, but no, I'm so proud of how everyone stepped up and just played big today. Leah, we talked so much about your ball screen offense, and I thought you were just excellent in those ball screen situations today. Take me into your mindset. What are you thinking when you're coming off a ball screen, and how are you able to be so effective? I mean, my first thing is just how how is my how is my defender going to guard it? Are they going to go under? Are they gonna go over? Um, and then if they go over on me, just attacking the five, attacking the five defense. And then if they sit back, then I'll have my pull up. And then if they if they step up, either, I either have my attack, and then it turns it turns into a two on one with my five, because my fives are so so good at uh, rolling really hard. Yeah, you guys worked that to perfection several times this evening, and 
I think I wanted to ask you just about this season because we know about the struggles that most programs have had at some point or another. And one thing that your coach said was that you were the one that really kept it positive. How tough was that for you in what I'm sure was a very difficult season at times? Yeah, uh, it was really hard. I mean, because there are so many times when we could have went negative, when we could have kind of went sulky, given up. Um, but no, I think my mindset was just, hey, it's all, it's on me. I'm the senior. My teammates are looking to me first. And so I have to control my attitude. I have to control how I walk into the locker room every day, walk into the gym every day. And if I can be positive, I know they're going to follow along. And that's what that's exactly what they did. They did an amazing job of just being happy. I mean, we, we knew um, we could never take a practice or game for granted. And I mean, we didn't. And that's that's honestly what got us here. And now here you are. Plenty of reasons to be happy now. Congrats on the win tonight, Aaliyah. Thank you. Aaliyah Goodman leading the way as the Oregon State Beavers are moving on to the second round after taking care of the Florida State Seminoles in this 8-9 matchup. So we stay chalk so far in the NCAA Women's Tournament as we send it to Kelsey Riggs in the studio.